I would like to know what Marco Rubio would specifically do to support Israel, especially right now. I mean, an American citizen was just killed in a terror attack, and I'd like to know what he would do to support Israel. And welcome back to our special Kelly File, face to face with the candidates. Tonight, we are coming to you from Hialeah, Florida. Back with me now, Senator Rubio. And you just heard that question, Senator, about Israel yeah. and your approach as president with Israel. Well, first, let's understand Israel is not just another country. Israel was created for a very special purpose to serve as the homeland for the Jewish people in the aftermath of the Holocaust. What Israel asks of the United States is just two things. Number one, that we support them in international forums because Israel faces a historic challenge to their legitimacy. You have this international effort to delegitimize them. And two, they ask us that if they run out of weapons to defend themselves, that we resupply them. Both of these things have been put in doubt by this president. When I I'm president, those things will never be in doubt. We will use our veto power at the United Nations to protect Israel, and we will rearm them every time they need to to be able to defend themselves. And on my first day in office, I will cancel Barack Obama's deal with Israel's mortal enemy, the Ayatollah of Iran. Now, you know the criticism of doing that. If we cancel the deal, we've already given them the money. We've already given them the carrots. And now, now we're going to impose the bad stuff on them, supposedly, with respect to this deal. And so if you cancel the deal, well, how does it hurt them? Well, first of all, they may have received some of their frozen assets, but the bottom line is that they won't, they, what they're going to benefit from on an ongoing basis is the ability to conduct transactions and business with American and other Western companies. And so the bottom line is this. When I'm president of the United States, companies in the private sector is going to have to choose. They can do work in the American economy or they can do work in the Iranian economy, but they will not be able to do both until Iran allows a full inspection of their military sites and all of their facilities and can prove to the world that they are not building a nuclear weapon from which they will try to destroy Israel and threaten and blackmail the world. Let, let's talk about visas, H-1B visas. Uh, this was brought up at the last debate, and this, right. is, this is basically a visa that would allow a highly skilled foreign worker to come into the United States and work here. And the way, the, just so the viewers understand, Ted Cruz wanted to quintuple these, and then he reversed his position and now says he doesn't want to do that because the program's been abused. You've called for doubling these visas, but you want the jobs to have to stay open to Americans only for the first six months. Donald Trump said he was against these visas, and then he said he was for the visas, and then he said he was for the visas, absolutely, and then the day after our last debate he says he's against the visas. So where do you stand on it now? Because they're very controversial. The workers at Disney who got fired, who had to train their, rep their right. replacements, say it's because of these visas. Well, it's because of the way they're being abused. So here's what's happening. People don't realize this. The H-1B visa, the Disney and other companies, they're not hiring the workers directly. They're hiring a consulting firm who's hoarding up all of these visas. So what they're basically doing is they're outsourcing the, the tech job to an outsourcing firm. That firm then uses H-1Bs to bring in workers mm -hmm. that don't even work for Disney. They work for the outsourcing firm, and that's how it's being abused. But the we indignity not, of it, I mean, just just, absolutely. To, just not to blow past it, because the testimony's been really heartfelt on Capitol but Hill we from should people not who allow say, these talk about having to train their foreign replacements at a right. job they've held for decades. And their argument is we've outsourced our tech division to this company. We should not allow those companies that, to hoard up these visas. Number two, it is illegal now, it is a violation of the program to use those visas to replace an American worker. It is illegal to do it now. And so two things. We should prevent these consulting companies from hoarding up H-1Bs so that companies can't be hiring them to then bring in workers because they're not direct employees. And number two, if you get caught abusing the program, you should be barred from ever using it again. We should enforce the laws that exist now and we should close the loophole on the consulting firms. What do you think? Immigration has obviously been a big issue in this campaign and for you. Although when you look at the exit polls and it has, we get different numbers on how important it is to the Republican voters, but for some subset of Republican voters, it's very important. And many in the Republican field feel Rubio, Senator Rubio, he betrayed he betrayed Floridians on this issue. He said he'd go to Congress and that he would he would not support immigration reform. But then he went there and he did. Do you feel like that has haunted you in this no, campaign? Because that's not an accurate assessment. What I said is I did not support blanket amnesty, that we weren't going to be hanging, hand, handing out citizenship cards. I don't support that now. I never did. What I do support is dealing with this reality. It begins by enforcing our laws. You also said you were not going to support a path to citizenship, which well, but you first did. of all, well, a special path, and I still don't support a special path. In essence, I think the most I'm willing to support, and I don't even know if the American people will go for it. I don't know if they'll support it. We're not going to ram it down their throats. But I don't think you should have a special process. The most I support is allowing people to have a work permit after the border is secured and all of that is proven. And then after 10 years, they can apply for a green card 
but just like anybody else would, not through a special pathway. And you have to have a green card for five years before you can even apply for citizenship. So you're talking about a 25-year deal. Most of them won't even pursue it. But again, that's not a majority position in my party. The, the work permit might be the most you can do, but we're doing nothing when I'm president until we first prove to people that illegal immigration is under control. That is the lesson of 2013. Who do you think, who do you think will be tougher on immigration as president, you or Donald Trump? Well, it's interesting. You know, Donald had an interview with the New York Times. He was asked about this at the debate, where he apparently shared that he had a lot of flexibility about immigration. So, but now he refuses to allow the New York Times to release the audio of that interview. So it's par for the course here, where I think you see someone that is saying one thing, but is saying another to the electorate. People are angry about immigration. They've been told for 25 years that it's going to be fixed and nothing happens, and Donald Trump is targeting that. And I understand why people are responding to it. But here's the point. You don't really know what his real views are on it. Just on the debate stage last week, he changed his position three times. And apparently, he told the New York Times something very differently than what he's telling voters they, now. They're, they're suggesting now that they're not sitting on some explosive revelation that would shock the conscience if it were released. Well, I think it's very easy then. Let's just have him released. Because... The, the New York Times would release him if he said to them, I'm okay with you releasing the contents of that interview. And it may not be explosive, but it's most certainly a lot more flexible than what he sounds like today. And by the way, at the last debate, when I outlined my position, he said he was fine with it, that he agreed with it. Donald Trump said that. So again, I think on this issue, no one understands it personally better than I do. My parents were immigrants. This is a community of immigrants. I know the good, the bad, and the ugly of this issue. It has to be dealt with in a responsible way that's good for America. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the military a bit, because that made some headlines as well. Um, what we would do in order, uh, what, what Trump would do in commanding the troops. He, he made an admission at the last debate that they would follow orders of his, even if they were illegal, because he's the commander in chief, and he would tell them to do it. But Trump realized the mistake in that the next day, and he walked it back. And many people feel that while it it may have been a reckless thing to say at the debate. Kudos to him for recognizing that and owning it and walking it back. Is your thoughts on that and whether there's anything you want to walk back that you've said? I mean, on policy, absolutely not. On policy, yeah. No. I mean, on that issue, good. I'm glad he walked it back, but that would be the bottom line anyway. Our men and women in uniform are some of the finest people in this country. They are never going to carry out an illegal order from a commander in chief. And, uh, and by the way, on the issue of interrogation, I believe we should have enhanced interrogation techniques, and you can do that on a terrorist without torture or whatever people want to call it. You can. It's not the same. You know, a terrorist is not the same as a criminal. When you are interrogating a criminal, you're trying to gather information to get a conviction at trial. When you're interrogating a terrorist, you're trying to gather information to prevent a future terrorist attack. We don't do that anymore. Well, we don't do it at all because they're closing Guantanamo. We don't capture terrorists, and if we do, they're not being interrogated. When I'm president, if we capture terrorists, they will be sent to Guantanamo. And interrogated? I mean, that's the thing that's happened with Barack Obama, is that he's shut down the CIA black sites where we did this sort of enhanced interrogation, but there's no place where we question the terrorists. We just drone them. Yeah, and, uh, and then and now we don't really get the information. They die, but we don't get the information. And by the way, when it comes to interrogation, the techniques should not be something that we are debating openly because what happens with terrorists, they learn our techniques, they practice in evading those techniques. So interrogation is a val very valuable tool, but it's not the only tool. I mean, you combine that with other things you know, you match it up with information that other people have told you. It's a key part of a toolbox of intelligence tools that we need to prevent terrorist attacks. What about Hillary Clinton? If you had to make a case against her, one of the criticisms people have of you is how are you going to go after her when you also supported what we did in Libya and you were for, in favor of the Iraq war and they feel that you have too much in common with her on, on foreign policy. I actually policy. did not support what they did in Libya. I wanted to do more than what they did. My, remember the term leading from behind came about as a result of Libya and the argument the president made is we're going to go in for 72 hours, do a few little things and then walk away and leave everybody else to fi figure it out. My argument was Gaddafi's going to fall. The Libyan people are going to get rid of him. The longer the civil war goes on, the more unstable that country is going to be afterwards. And it is. And the more likely it's going to be you're going to have terrorists there. He allowed it to become a protracted conflict because he led from behind. The record is clear. Would I you send ground troops there into Libya? U.S. ground troops? Well, I... Now, for purposes of targeting ISIS, I do believe we need to conduct special operations on the ground. Ultimately, the ideal outcome... Just special ops. In, well, because I don't think you don't invade Libya. I think the, out, the ideal outcome in Libya is that a true transitional, ultimately permanent government takes hold, and we should be helpful in that endeavor. There's only so much we can do. But what we don't want to see is a vacuum. That vacuum is being filled by aren't, ISIS. Aren't we seeing that now? We are, because they're completely unchallenged in Darna and the Sirte province. They're completely unchallenged. For them, it is prime operational space. Stand by. Much, much more with Senator Marco Rubio still ahead. Questions from the crowd and the senator to share some personal family photos. And
Door is with us. Don't go away.